special treat for you today. It's cold outside, and I wanted you to feel warm and cozy, so I've lit my fireplace. Listen to the gentle crackle, and let yourself be warmed from the inside. As with all of our readings, I like to begin with a relaxation exercise. Please close your eyes. And take a deep breath in. Let it out slowly through your nose. Let all of the tensions of your day drift away. Now hold your left arm out and with the fingers of your right hand draw shapes lightly on your left forearm. Bring your fingers gently up and down, just touching your skin as lightly as possible. If you'd like, you can keep your eyes closed while I read to you. Today's reading is The Fur Tree by Hans Christian Andersen, written in 1845. Far down in the forest, where the warm sun and the fresh air made a sweet resting place, grew a pretty little fir tree, and yet it was not happy. It wished so much to be tall like its companions, the pines and firs which grew around it. The sun shone, and a soft air fluttered in its leaves, and the little peasant children passed by, prattling merrily. But the fir tree heeded them not. Sometimes the children would bring a basket of raspberries or strawberries and seat themselves near the fir tree and say, is this not a pretty little tree? Which made it feel more unhappy than before. And yet, all this while the tree grew in a notch or joint taller every year. For by the number of joints in the stem of a fir tree, we can discover its age. Still, as it grew, it complained. I wish I were as tall as the other trees. Then I would spread out my branches on every side, and my top would overlook the wide world. I should have the birds building their nests on my boughs, and when the wind blew, I should bow with stately dignity like my tall companions do. The tree was so discontented that it took no pleasure in the warm sunshine or the rosy clouds that floated over it, morning and evening. Sometimes in winter, when the snow lay white and glittering on the ground, a hare would come springing along and jump right over the little tree, and then how mortified it would feel. Two winters passed, and when the third arrived, the tree had grown so tall that the rabbits were obliged to run around and yet it remained unsatisfied and would exclaim, Oh, if I could but keep growing tall and old, there is nothing else worth caring for in the world. In the autumn, as usual, the woodcutters came and cut down several of the tallest trees, and the young fir tree, which was now grown to its full height, shuddered as the noble tree fell to the earth with a crash. After the branches were chopped off, the trunks looked so slender and bare, they could scarcely be recognized. Then they were placed upon wagons and drawn by horses out of the forest. Where are they going? What would become of them? The young fir tree wished very much to know. So in the spring, when the shallows and the storks came, it asked, Do you know where those trees were taken? Did you meet them? The swallows knew nothing, but the stork, after a little reflection, nodded his head and said, Yes, I think I do. I met several ships when I flew from Egypt, and they had fine masts that smelt like fur. I think these must have been the trees. I assure
assure you they were very stately, very stately indeed. Oh, how I wish I were tall enough to go on the sea, said the fir tree. What is the sea, and what does it look like? It would take too much time to explain, said the stork, and it flew away quickly. Rejoice in thy youth, said the sunbeam. Rejoice in thy fresh growth and the young life that is in thee. And when the wind kissed the tree and the dew watered it with tears, the fir tree regarded them not. Still unhappy. Christmas time drew near, and many young trees were cut down, some even smaller and younger than the fir tree, who enjoyed neither rest nor peace with longing to leave its forest home. These young trees, which were chosen for their beauty, kept their branches and were also laid on wagons and drawn by horses out of the where are they going? asked the fir tree. They are not taller than I. Indeed, one is much less. And why are the branches not cut off? Where are they going? We know this time, sang the sparrows. We have looked in at the windows of the houses in the town, and we know what is done with them. They are dressed up in the most splendid manner. We have seen them standing in the middle of a warm room, and adorned with all sorts of beautiful things. Honey cakes, gilded apples, playthings, and many hundreds of wax tapers. And then, as the fir tree, trembling through all its branches, and then what happens? We did not see any more, said the sparrow. This was enough for us. I wonder whether anything so brilliant will ever happen to me, thought the fir tree. It would be so much better than crossing the sea. I long for it, almost with pain. Oh, when will Christmas be here? I am now as tall and well-grown as those which were taken away last year. Oh, that I were late standing in the warm room with all that brightness and splendor around me. Something better and more beautiful is to come after, or the trees would not be decorated so. Yes, what follows will be grander and more splendid. What can it be? I am weary with longing. I scarcely know how to feel. Rejoice with us, said the air and the sunlight. Enjoy thine own bright life in the fresh air. But the tree would not rejoice, and though it grew taller every day, and winter and summer, its dark green foliage might be seen in the forest, while passers-by would say, look at that beautiful tree. Before Christmas, the discontented fir tree was the first to fall. As the axe cut through the stem and divided the pith, the tree fell with a groan to the earth, conscious of pain and faintness, and forgetting all of its anticipations of happiness, now in sorrow at leaving its home in the forest. It knew it should never again see its dear old companions, the trees, nor were the little bushes and many covered flowers that had grown by its side. Perhaps not even the birds, and neither was the journey at all pleasant. The tree first recovered itself while being unpacked in the courtyard of a house with several other trees. It heard a man say, we only want one, and this one is the prettiest. Then came two servants in grand livery and carried the fir tree into a large and beautiful apartment. On the walls hung pictures, and near the great stove stood great china vases. Lions were on the lids. There were rocking chairs. 
chairs, silken sofas, large tables covered with pictures, books, and playthings worth a great deal of money. At least, the children said so. Then the fir tree was placed in a large tub full of sand, green fabric hung all around so that no one could see that it was a tub of sand and stood on a very handsome carpet. How the fir tree trembled. What was going to happen to him now? Some young ladies came, and the servants helped them to adorn the tree. On one branch, they hung little bags cut out of colored paper, and each bag was filled with sweet meats. From other branches hung gilded apples and walnuts as if they had grown there, and above and all around were hundreds of red, blue, and white tapers, which were fastened on the branches. Dolls, exactly like real babies, were placed under the green leaves. The tree had never seen such things before, and at the very top was fastened a glittering star made of tin was so beautiful. This evening, they all exclaimed, how bright it will be. Oh, that the evening were come, thought the tree, and the tapers lighted. Then I should know what else is going to happen. Will the trees of the forest come to see me? I wonder if the sparrows will peep in at the windows as they fly. Shall I grow faster here and keep all of these ornaments summer and winter? But guessing was of very little use, and it made its bark ache. And this pain is as bad for a slender fir tree as a headache is for us. At last, all of the tapers were lighted, and then what a glistening blaze of light the tree presented. It trembled so with joy in all its branches that each one of the candles fell among the green leaves and burnt some of them. Help us, help us, exclaimed the young ladies, but there was no danger, for they quickly extinguished the fire. After this, the tree tried not to tremble though the fire frightened him. He was so anxious not to hurt any of the beautiful ornaments, even while their brilliancy dazzled him. And now the folding doors were thrown open, and a troop of children rushed in as if they intended to upset the tree. They were followed more silently by their elders. For a moment, the little ones stood silent with astonishment, and then they shouted for joy until the room rang, and they danced merrily around the tree. One present after another was taken. What are they doing? What will happen next, thought the fir. At last, the candles burnt down to the branches and were put out children received permission to plunder the tree. Oh, how they rushed upon it until the branches cracked, and had it not been fastened with the glistening star to the ceiling, it might have been thrown down. The children then danced about with their pretty toys, and no one noticed the tree except the children's maid, who came and peeked among the branches to see if an apple or a fig had been forgotten. A story, a story, cried the children. They pulled a little fat man towards the tree. Now we shall be in the green shade, said the man, as he seated himself under it, and the tree will have the pleasure of hearing also. But I shall only relate one story. What shall it be? Ave David, or Humpty Dumpty, who fell down the stairs, but 
soon got up again, and at last married a princess. Ave David, cried some, Humpty Dumpty, cried others, and there was a fine shouting and crying out. But the fir tree remained quite still, and thought to himself, Shall I have anything to do with this? But he had already amused them as much as they wished. Then the old man told them the story of Humpty Dumpty, how he fell down the stairs and was raised up again and married a princess. And the children clapped their hands and cried, Tell another, tell us another, for they wanted to hear the story of Ava David. But they had only had Humpty Dumpty. After this, the fir tree became quite silent and thoughtful. Never had the birds in the forest told such tales as Humpty Dumpty, who fell down the stairs and yet married a princess. Ah, oh, yes, so it happens in the world, thought the fir tree. He believed it all because it was related by such a nice man. Ah, oh, well, he thought, who knows? Perhaps I may fall down, too, and marry a princess. And he looked forward joyfully to the next evening, expecting to be again decked out with lights and playthings, gold and fruit. Tomorrow I will not tremble, thought he. I will enjoy all of my splendor, and I shall hear the story of Humpty Dumpty again, and perhaps even... Aved Avid, and the tree remained quiet and thoughtful all night. In the morning, the servants and the housemaid came in. Now, thought the fir, all my splendor is going to begin again. But they dragged him out of the room and up the stairs to the garret and threw him on the floor in a dark corner where no daylight shone. And there, they left him. What does this mean? thought the tree. What am I to do here? I can hear nothing in a place like this. And he had time to think, for days and nights passed, and no one came near him. And when at last somebody did come, it was only to put away large boxes in a corner. So the tree was completely hidden from sight as if he had never existed. It is winter now, thought the tree. The ground is hard and covered with snow so that the people cannot plant me. I shall be sheltered here, I dare say, until the spring comes. How thoughtful and kind everybody is to me. Still, I wish this place were not so dark as well as lonely not even a little rabbit to look at. How pleasant it was, out in the forest, while the snow lay on the ground, when the rabbit would run by, and yes, jump over me too, although I did not like it then. Oh, it is terribly lonely here. Squeak, squeak, said a little mouse, creeping cautiously towards the tree. Then came another, and they both sniffed at the fir tree and crept beneath the branches. Oh, it is very cold, said the mouse, or else we should be so comfortable here, shouldn't we, you old fir tree? I am not old, said the fir tree. There are many who are older than I am. Where do you come from, and what do you know, asked the mice, who were full of curiosity. Have you seen the most beautiful places in the world, and can you tell us all about them? And have you been in the storeroom, where cheeses lie on the shelf, and hams hang from the ceiling? One can run on about tallow candles there, and go in thin, and come out I know nothing of that place, said the fir tree, but I know the wood where the sun shines and the
the birds sing. And then the tree told the little mice all about his youth. They had never heard such an account in their lives. And after they had listened to the tree attentively, they said, What a number of things you have seen. You must have been very happy. Happy, exclaimed the fir tree. And then, he reflected upon what he had been telling them, and he said, Oh, yes, after all those were happy days. But when he went on and related all about Christmas Eve, and how he had been dressed with cakes and lights, the mice said, How happy you must have been, you old fir tree, and what splendid stories you can relate. And the next night, four other mice came with them to hear what the tree had to tell. The more he talked, the more he remembered. And then he thought to himself, those were happy days, but they may come again. Humpty Dumpty fell down the stairs, and yet he married the princess. Perhaps I may marry a princess too. And the fir tree of the pretty little birch tree that grew in the forest, which was to him a real beautiful princess. Who is Humpty Dumpty? asked the little mice. And then the tree related the whole story. He could remember every single word. And the little mice were so delighted that they were ready to jump to the top of the tree. The next night, a great many more mice made their appearance, and on Sunday, two rats came with them. But they said, it was not a pretty story at all, and the little mice were very sorry, for it made them also think less of the tree. Do you only know one story? asked the rats. Only one, replied the fir tree. I heard it on the happiest evening of my life but I did not know I was so happy at the time. We think it is a very miserable story, said the rats. Don't you know any story about bacon or tallow in the storeroom? No, replied the tree. Many thanks to you then, replied the rats, and they marched away. The little mice also kept away after this, and the tree sighed and said, it was very pleasant when the merry little mice sat round me and listened while I talked. Now that has all passed, too. However, I shall consider myself happy when someone comes to take me out of this place. But would this ever happen? Yes. One morning, people came to clear out the garret. The boxes were packed away, and the tree was pulled out from the dark corner. He was thrown roughly on the garret floor. Then the servant dragged him out upon the staircase where the daylight shone. Now life is beginning again, thought the tree, rejoicing in the sunshine and fresh air. Then it was carried downstairs and taken into the courtyard so quickly that it forgot to think of itself and could only look about. There was so much to be seen. The court was close to a garden where everything looked blooming. Fresh and fragrant roses hung. Linen trees were in blossom. Swallows flew here and there, crying, twit, twit, twit. My mate it was not the fir tree they meant. Now I shall live, cried the tree, spreading joyfully. His branches felt free once again, but alas, they were all withered and yellow, and it lay in a corner amongst weeds and nettles. The star of gold paper still stuck in the top of the tree glittered in the sunshine. In the same courtyard, two 
of the merry children were playing, who had danced around the tree at Christmas, and had been so happy. The youngest saw the gilded star, and ran and pulled it off the tree. Look what we left sticking to the ugly old fir tree, said the child, treading on the branches until they cracked under his boots. And the tree saw all the fresh, bright flowers in the garden, and then looked at itself, and wished it had remained in the dark corner of the garret. It thought of its fresh youth in the forest, of the merry Christmas evening, and of the little mice who had listened to the story of Humpty Dumpty. Past, past said the old tree. Oh, had I but enjoyed myself while I could have done so. But now it is too late. Then a lad came and chopped the tree into small pieces until a large bundle lay in a heap on the ground. The pieces were placed in a fire under the copper and they quickly blazed up the tree sighed so deeply that each sigh was like a pistol shot. Then the children who were at play came and seated themselves in front of the fire and looked at it and cried, Pop, pop, pop. But at each pop, which was a deep sigh, the tree was thinking of a summer day in the forest, and of a Christmas evening, and of Humpty Dumpty, the only story it had ever known or heard, until at last it was consumed. The boys still played in the garden, and the youngest wore the golden star on his breast, with which the tree had been adorned during the happiest evening of his whole existence. Now all of that was past. The tree's life was over, and the story also. For all stories must come to an end at last. Thank you for listening.